happy Monday. Um, if you follow my channel, you will know that I did not have a video last week. So today we're gonna do a little story time and I'll tell you why, because it's not a very fun story. I, and if you don't follow my channel, then you won't know that I was gone last week at all. So we're just gonna start off with a little story time anyway. But um, last week I was feeling very sick. I had a horrible, horrible cough. Um, no fever or anything, but just, you know, caught one of the many things going around the school and a really, really just deep cough. And I've always had a super deep cough. So like my whole body convulses. So I stayed home Tuesday um, just to give my body some rest. I probably should have stayed home on Monday, but I wore myself out. So I stayed home Tuesday, came into work. And when I was home on Tuesday, I did recognize that um, my back was feeling a little, a little funky. I was kind of sitting weird and with all the coughing and everything. Um, basically long story short is I think I have a slipped disc in my back now, um, which is just so fun. If you are over the age of 30 and approaching 40, like I am, uh, maybe you've experienced something where you've coughed so hard that now your back is hurt. And so at first I would just like, okay, I have a sore back. I've thrown out my back before, whatever. Um, I'll give it some time to rest. But so that was Tuesday. Each day was getting a little bit worse. It, I was not getting better at all. It was definitely getting worse. I was trying to stretch. Um, I was having sciatic nerve pain, which I've never had before, where it goes down your leg. And then by the end of Wednesday, I remember it was, um, cause it was global play day, which was so much fun. I want to tell you about that. But by the end of that day, my foot started getting numb. My left foot it was like tingly and numb. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that's sciatica. Uh, like I said, they, everyone said she'd go away in a couple days. Thursday comes, um, I'm still at work. I'm finding myself like leaning against, I can't sit in a position for too long. I can't stand in a position for too long. I can't lay down in a position for too long because it starts to hurt. So I find myself like leaning against something to support my back. Um, but you know, I was still here and doing it. And then Friday, worse again. Saturday, uh, I ended up going to the ER because I was having muscle spasms in my lower back that were so hard. They were just like contracting and squeezing the muscle so badly. So it was like one of the worst pains I've ever felt and I have had two children. So anyway, I go to the ER, my blood pressure when, they, when I checked in was like through the roof um, from being in so much pain and they gave me uh, an x-ray just to make sure that it wasn't anything fractured. Um, they said they cannot see a slip disc on an x-ray. That would be like an MRI and a slip disc is usually uh, one of the main causes, I guess, for this type of sciatic pain. Um, and basically all I can do is just like wait it out. So I was happy that I don't have like a fracture to my bone, but at the same time I was like, oh, so I just have to keep doing this. So they did suggest I rest. They actually gave me a note, a doctor's note for today to not come in. But, and so I wasn't planning on coming in, but I have, um, there's a huge snowstorm coming tomorrow. So I don't think we'll be in school tomorrow and I don't have anything ready for plans. So I am here in the morning and I think I'm gonna leave at lunchtime so I can go home and rest because they gave me like muscle relaxers and um, what's it called, steroids. They gave me all this stuff to kind of take the edge off and to help my body from not convulsing anymore but I can't be working or driving when I'm on it. So for Advil and a, uh, a lidocaine patch is going to help for this morning. That's my, that's my goal. And I really just want it to get better because it's not getting better. And that is not cool. I keep hoping to like wake up and be like, okay, I feel fine. But um, that's not happening. So here we are. I figure since I am here, I'll give you a little update into what we have been up to the last couple weeks. Um, or the last week, I should say, and then a little bit about what's on our agenda for this week. This is our last week of school, and then we have February vacation, so we've got a little bit of wrapping up to do, so let me share what we're doing. All right, so in terms of what we have been up to, let's go to the plans. We have our morning lunch, morning meeting, talk about our weekend. In phonics, we have been doing um, unit eight, which is mostly getting students to understand the difference between digraphs and blends, but it also introduces some of the R controlled vowels. So it doesn't necessarily need students to be able to read or write words with these vowels yet, um, because foundations is like a K through three program instead of a K through two, but I do definitely have my students practice it. And over on the back wall, I started our new R controlled section there. So we have A-R-car-R, O-R-horn-or, 
And then we're going to blend some words, smart, farm, card. After we blend each one, I, so basically when I do it, let me go back one. I say sound, sound, or blend, horse, horse. So we kind of hold it and then they put that there. Um, we talk about what a horse is. All my kids will know what a horse is, but you know, sometimes we don't know the vocabulary words. So sport, then we have north. And then I think today we are also, yeah, we are also learning the three sounds, or sorry, the three other R controlled vowels that all make the er sound. So we have bird, her, and burn. And then we're going to blend just a couple here, third, fern, and nurse. And then I have students come on up to the board. And when they come up here, I'm looking for them to mark up the words. So they are being word detectives. They are looking for digraphs. They're looking for blends. If they see a digraph, they'll go ahead and underline it, um, underline the digraph. If they see a blend, they will either scoop it. I always had scooped it in the past, so sometimes I still do that. Or they'll go ahead and draw two little lines. If they see that double L back there, they'll go ahead and give, um, for our floss rule, they'll put a star over the L, but they will basically just come up here, mark up the word and read it for us. After phonics and snack and recess, we have officer coming. He is doing dare for us today. So we have half an hour of that. For reading after this, I'll have them go into a spin say spell. They'll go ahead and do this with a partner. We've done this many, many times. This would normally be like our three centers with reading groups, but that time is getting taken today. For win this week, I have some um, reading phonics find it as well as my say and spell for words with blends. This one's gonna be all L blends and this one is S blends. And then time to the hour review. We are working on time. For writing, I'm having them listen to Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch. And then they're doing from down here their little writing. Um, they'll pick a Valentine and say why that person is special to them. And then for math, one of my favorite games, I have this as a freebie, but it's called Around the Clock. And students basically put their game cubes up there. They will spin, or no, they'll roll the dice, move that many spaces. And this one's all time to the hour and half hour. And then they have to color in the clock that matches. And they'll keep going until all the clocks are colored in. Then we have our February calendar. We have a new little calendar with Sully there. We will go into our math talk, true or false. They'll have to explain why. And then these are just my introduction to time to the half hour. So time to the half hour is being introduced today. What is the job of the hour hand and minute hand? We'll be able to tell time on a digital and analog clock. I'll show them how to do this. And then we will have them practice both writing time to the half hour digitally and on an analog clock as well. And then they'll have some practice to match up the clocks on their own. At the end of every math block, we also close it up. What happens to the hour hand as the minute hand moves around the clock? So just some getting to notice what happens. And then this is a fun game. One of my other co-teachers taught me. This unit that we're doing right now is calendar and time. So getting to know those days of the week in order, as well as the months of the year. And this game is called Don't Be a Sunday. Basically, students just sit in a big circle and um, I will kick it off by saying Sunday. And then students go around Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And then once somebody is the next Sunday, they have to sit down in the circle and they just see who is the last person standing. So it gets them to review the days of the week pretty quickly in a fun and engaging way. Our special is library. And then we are still doing our opinion writing. So I have these opinion writing prompts up here. I think I told you last time, but I've been having my students bring their whiteboards and markers to the rug um, to answer this using one of our state your opinion stems here. Um, but I know last time I forgot to give you the end, but here you can see the conclusions that we have. So now my students should be able to answer a writing prompt by stating their opinion, giving at least two reasons, and then giving a conclusion as well. And then instead of social studies today, we are going to have students make their Valentine's Day bags because Valentine's Day is on Wednesday and we're having a little Valentine's Day party. So I have all the materials back here. Let me see if I can find them. Here we go. It's a little bit different than the one up there, but they'll pick a Valentine's Day body. They'll color this in. We'll do the little scrunchy, uh, scrunch them back and forth for their arms and hands, and they'll write their names on the bags here. And then here's just some of the mats that we're gonna use during our telling time lessons. Uh, we made our own clocks last week when we introduced time to the hour. I like to have them make the entire clock by themselves first. They write hour and minute. We do all of the numbers so they can really understand where they go and then I had them 
uh, show different times on their clock. And we talked about the intervals, how there's 60 minutes going around, five minutes in between each one, and so on. So we use these as their little manipulatives when making time and showing time. But then if I want them to actually write it or draw it with a whiteboard marker, we'll use these. Um, and this paper here came with my whole group teaching slides that I'm using today. Hello from home. I am back home. It is about 11.45, almost noon. Um, I am very happy I put in for the half day because about maybe around 11 after all the walking around, um, definitely started to feel my back a little bit more. So I am back home. I'm going to have some medicine and I'm going to put on a heating pad and try to find a comfortable position to lay in. I showed you the plans and what we're working on this week, essentially, before we head off to February vacation. Um, basically, everything I shared today, because I think I told you tomorrow, I'm 90% sure will be a snow day. We're supposed to get like six to 10 inches. So we'll really only have, they'll finish up today. We'll have Wednesday, which is Valentine's Day, Thursday, Friday. So we are finishing up that unit eight in foundations, which is going to be blends and our controlled vowels. We are finishing up telling time. So I actually have two review days this week. I was gonna do Wednesday and Thursday review, um, but if there's no snow, I'll just do one day of review instead, where students are going to be reviewing telling time to the hour, telling time to the half hour, and also just some addition and subtraction within 20 strategies. I actually think next week I'm gonna show a video, I'll share a video about some of the review strategies that I like to use with math to just kind of keep things spiraling. I think I had mentioned this in another video, but my students are definitely not proficient with addition and subtraction within 20. Like we finished the unit, I assessed them, but overall it's definitely an entire class um, struggle that we are still working on. So I definitely try to build in some review times each day and each week in math. So I think next week I will do a video kind of sharing some of the fun ways I like to do that. But I did want to share, I know I mentioned earlier, sorry, I'm walking all around because I'm trying to decide where to go. And I don't want to sit yet. But um, I did want to share about Global Play Day. It was so much fun. I knew that my school celebrated Global Play Day because I remember it from the last couple of years, but getting to actually do it as a teacher was so fun. I guess Global Play Day is the first Wednesday, I believe. First or second Wednesday? Second Wednesday. I don't know. I don't remember. It's either the first or second Wednesday every February. Um, so it's basically a full day of play. And it's just a very nice way to kind of break the routine. Um, now, a lot of it's going to be unstructured. But just to kind of build within our day, I made it pretty structured for them. Um, so let me pull up the slides and I can show you kind of what we did and share some pictures. Okay, I went ahead and pulled these up on my computer. We had our regular, you know, morning meeting. Everybody came in. And then it was Wednesday, so we did Would You Rather Wednesday. Would you rather win an Olympic gold medal or win an acting award? And would you rather live in a big city or out on a farm? They have to share why. And then the first type of games we did were listening games. So I have in the SJT Literacy Club a whole bunch of phonics bingo packs. Um, and so we did the ones that were blends. So I'd cut out the pictures and I gave them each some bingo boards and some daubers and they played bingo a bunch of times and they got stickers if they won. And then another listening game we did was I Have Who Has, um, and we did this with addition within 20. So we played two listening games, and then for phonics, so I kind of like went along because our first section of the day is usually Hegarty, so I tried to like pair up the games with what we might be working on. So Hegarty, while we didn't do phonemic awareness, well, we did kind of with bingo, but we also just, we tried to focus in on that listening. Um, and then we did phonics. This is my roll and read or read and color games. I've played these all the time. I've shared them many times before. And this was one with blends. Snack and recess was the same. And then we actually read a bunch of books throughout the day about being a good teammate and the importance of sportsmanship. Since we were playing a lot of games, I thought that these read alouds would be a great um, addition to our day to kind of talk about it. So we read The Golden Acorn by Katie Hudson. Loved this book. Um, and we talked about identifying characteristics of a good teammate. And we came up with some pretty good ideas. And then they had about 15 minutes. So this was our only digital time throughout the day. Um, and we did different iPad games, um, both memory and letterbug are games that my husband made. Um, I love letterbug and memory. So again, two little like phonics games, or they could do Kings and Queens or IXL games. Then our PE teacher is awesome. He decided to do 20 minute slots where he had a bunch of games in the gym um, that students could go play. And so two teachers signed up at a time and they would bring in their class with them. 
um, and then we could kind of rest for a little bit and he ran the whole thing. It was a bunch of fun. The kids absolutely loved it. And then we had board games. So for board game time, I brought in a bunch of games. We already have Jenga, we had memory, um, we brought headbands, guess who, just a whole bunch of fun board games that students could play together. And then we had lunch and recess, calendar was the same. Um, in math, we played a bump game, which was a lot of fun, snowman bump. I have this as a freebie, I'll list it down below. Um, and then for the second half of math, we did totally unstructured free play. So kind of like we do in the morning, we have all sorts of things that students can play with and just be imaginative and creative. So they did that. Our special was music that day. And then when they came back from music, we just did two more things, puzzle time. I brought in a bunch of puzzles for the students. I had a construction puzzle, uh, frozen puzzles, all sorts of puzzles, and then more free play before the end of the day. I would love to know from you. Let me know down in the comments if you and your school participate in Global Play Day. They Even if you go online, they have like a little letter you can send home to parents, but it was such a nice little break from the regular routine and just getting to really learn and watch your students, you know, play in those unstructured periods. They grow a ton and learn from one another. Um, and then I also loved reading those books throughout the day. So four of my favorites, I know I shared The Golden Acorn, that was already one, but here are the others we read. Sally Sore Loser, uh, The Big Cheese, and what is the other one in this? Pig the, Pig the Winner. I know it's up there, but I can't see it. So Pig the Winner. I read all four of those and we had some great discussions around what it looks like to be a good winner, what it looks like to be a good loser, um, how we can cheer each other on and so on. So it was a really, really fun day. I did have one last other update I wanted to share with you. Um, I know many people were, and I'm excited that you were excited because it's interesting to me too, to hear about the curriculum journey that we're on for deciding some new literacy curriculum. Unfortunately, last week, the day I was out was the next literacy committee meeting, um, but I did get a rundown and basically, uh, we looked at a few different reports and what we did during the last meeting is we cut wonders out. So wonders will not be in the running, we should say, for um, our curriculum. So I still need to get a little bit more detail about why um, I heard a couple things, but I want to be clear before I share with you why we decided not to go with it. But yeah, no wonders. And we are moving on with the process and we're going to meet with some publishers, hear what they have to say, hopefully get our hands on some of these materials and then see where the next steps take us. So I definitely will remember to be updating you all. All right. On that note, I know I didn't share too much, but that's kind of all my brain can handle right now. Um, in terms of what we are up to these days. So as always, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. And my hope for you is that by the next video, I am feeling a lot better and I can share a little bit more. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Ooh.